since December 28th has Gonzaga played a game on their home floor. Welcome inside the McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane, Washington. It's Gonzaga hosting Pepperdine. And as we take a look now at the West Coast Conference standings, you will see that it is a battle between the unbeatens in conference play. Gonzaga a perfect 3-0, and and so is Pepperdine also 3-0. and It is wonderful to see everyone again. Greg Heiser along with Craig Elo. Craig, already very loud in here. I tell you what, Gonzaga, they're 3-0, and but they're rolling. And how good has Elias Harris been? Not all season, but really, 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 really good since conference play started. Since conference has started, he has been spectacular, just like you said. Not only is he scoring the basketball, but he's playing above the rim. Three dunks against St. Mary's, and they were all impressive. But I tell you what else he's doing well, Greg. He's taking good shots, and he's making those shots at a 64% rate. That ball right there was scary for the Zag fans, but guess what? Elias checks back into the game and immediately goes to the bucket. I don't think he was hurt at all. 25 points, 11 rebounds over those three games. Co-player of the week because of Lorne Jackson of Pepperdine. They, too, are 3-0. and He, too, off to a wonderful start. Yeah, the conference start for Lorne Jackson has been tremendous. He was only averaging about eight points a game in non-conference, but there you see his stats. He's up to 18 points in conference, and he's been a real spark plug to go along with some other guys out there. Michael Thompson, he's kind of the guy that plays solid all night long. He makes tough shots for him, but the guy you really want to keep an eye on tonight is ding, 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 Keon Bell. This young man is explosive. He goes to the basket hard, and he takes a lot, he puts a lot of pressure on the defense. The team that wins will have first place in the West Coast Conference standings for a couple of days. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment of silence right now inside the arena and heavy hearts around Zach Hill because of Dan Fitzgerald, a head coach for 15 years here at Gonzaga, passed away on Tuesday of a sudden heart attack. A sudden heart attack. So a lot of heavy hearts around Zagville, and he'll be in a lot of our thoughts and minds throughout this game. Inside the McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane, number 15, Gonzaga, hosting Pepperdine. Two unbeatens in league play. Both are 3-0. and And, of course, the winner here tonight will have sole possession of first place for at least a couple of days. Here's the Northern Quest, Craig's keys to the game, Craig. Yeah, the Zags, they want to rebound and run. Pepperdine has a lot of shooters out there. They'll take quick shots. So the Zags want to make sure they secure the rebound and then run. And create defense by making the uh, Pepperdine Waves play a little bit of a uh, defense against that transition offense. And here's the starting lineup for Gonzaga. Goodson, the point guard, Bolden and Gray, the guards, Robert Sacre and Harris, the front line for head coach Mark Few. And what a run he has had. Now in his uh, 11th season as the head coach, over 80% of his games, he has won. For Pepperdine, this is a young team, not as young as they were a year ago. Keon Bell, Lauren Jackson, Michael Thompson, Taylor Darby, and Tannen Carey, or Tanner Carey. And there's Tom Asbury in his second stint as the head coach at Pepperdine. And when he was here for his first stint, he really had a formula for be beating Gonzaga. He doesn't have the players yet, but one has to wonder if he's on his way. They're playing better. They're 3-0. And you said it, they're a young team. There's a lot of sophomores out there. So all the wins that they've had so far in conference can only help them and, and give them confidence in the next few years. Michael Thompson into the middle. This is Carey. A nice little jump hook in the paint by Tanner Carey, a freshman out of Sydney, Australia. Yeah, he only averages. He's got his average right now. He hit the first bucket for the ways, but, uh, you know, he's an inside presence for him. And Bolden at the free throw line. He did not have a big night against San Diego offensively. Let's see if that early basket gets him going here tonight. He didn't have a lot of opportunities against the Toreros, and there's that co-player of the, of the week, Jackson, taking an outside shot. No contest. There was nobody with a hand in his face. Stephen Gray, that's off the front of the rim. 
Harris was being held inside by Taylor Darby. No call. Yeah. And Michael Thompson with it. Taylor Darby's job tonight stick with Elias Harris and do not leave it. Darby over Sacre too hard. And now Goodson. This kid's a sprinter for Gonzaga, Dimitri Goodson. If they had a track team, I think he'd be anchoring the 4 by 100. Sacre off. Harris with a rebound. And he's fouled our first of the game. You know, we talk so much about uh, Elias Harris and how good he's scoring the basketball, but the thing that I think true basketball fans love how he attacks the offensive boards. He gives Gonzaga a lot of second chance opportunities. Harris out of Germany. And he misses the front end. But when he erupted against St. Mary's, we all knew and and I think a lot of people now on the West Coast understand the potential of Elias Harris. But when he was able to drop that game on St. Mary's on the road in Moraga to open up league play, actually second game of league play, uh, you had to really, really then understand this kid's true potential. 31 points in that game. Yeah, I don't think there's any bar or roof or ceiling for this young man to get better. He's just he's a phenomenal player for the Zags. Keon Bell off the shot there. So two jump shots, deep jump shots for Pepperdine. This is a team in their first three league games are 31 of 60 from behind the arc. That's better than 51%. That is amazing. Oh, that's a great play. A great feed from Gray to Bolden. Matt with four points. I love seeing that it was a great screen for Matt to come off from the weak side going to the strong side. You know the pass is important and they fed him right going in rhythm to the basket. So Matt Bolden off to a good start right now for Zags. There's Darby baseline on Harris. They'll get the roll. Darby got it back. And an offensive foul called inside on Pepperdine. Yeah. Give it to number four Tanner Carey. Looked like Tanner Carey was trying to put a body on Robert Sackery after he went over and tried to contest the shot or block the shot. And you know you got to do everything in your realm to try to keep Robert off the board because he's so big and Tanner was just using his body and his hands and everything trying to block uh, big Zachary out and that's two fouls on Tanner Carey so he's out of the game right now and he's replaced by number 44 Corbin Moore a 6'10 sophomore out of Cypress California. Harris squares on Darby, jump shot short. Zachary flies through with a rebound and the reset. Gray, three ball, four. Eight to two, Gonzaga. Steven caught the ball. The seams weren't in, in his hands where he liked it. No defense, so he had time to readjust, get his hands and fingers on the seams, and drill the three pointer. Keon Bell, second leading scorer in the West Coast Conference with the ball right now. He got to the baseline, left it inside. Moore with a shot, affected by Sacre, and Rob with the rebound, and now Bolden. Turnover. Try to go to Harris. Yeah, that was a nice look and a nice try, but the, the passing lane was very short. Wasn't much room in there. You want to create a little bit more spacing. And if there was spacing, I think Elias would have caught that basketball. Well, and Matt was pretty close to the rim. He maybe should have just shot it. And you and I have argued about that before. Matt needs to be a little selfish. This is his senior campaign. You know, there's no reason why if he shoots the ball, then Elias is in great uh, offensive rebounding position. Four on the shot clock for Jackson. And a foul called inside as Jackson found the scene and able to get to the rim. You know, that's a, that's a good sign for Coach Asbury. You've taken two long shots. Jackson's missed one and, and Bell's missed one. So the next time you want to attack the rim, and that's exactly what Jackson did. Went right in at uh, Robert, and Robert wasn't able to get in front of Jackson. The 73% free throw shooter averaging about nine points a game. That's for the whole season in the right. conference. He's way up there with points. Jackson hits them both. Off that foul on Rob Sacre, his first. That's the first on Gonzaga. Sacre now posting up inside and wanting the ball. He's got it. Kick out Bolden. Thought about driving. Here's Goodson. Nice catch by Dimitri. 
Gray again. Nope. Gave it to Harris. And kind of bailed out there by number 44, Corbin Moore. Very good patience by the Zags. The uh, Waves went to his zone. Zags were very patient looking for the good shot. At Anthony's, we buy the freshest seafood directly from the fishermen. Come in now for our 1995 lobster dinner. It includes chowder or a garden fresh salad. Anthony's is family owned and dedicated to providing the ultimate Northwest dining experience. When you think of fresh seafood, think Anthony's. We serve it with a view.